Hello, welcome to another video. Uh, in this video, we are doing a three day walk. So it'd be two nights of camping and we are doing the Medway Valley walk from our uh, Kent Valley, River Valley book, uh, where we've already completed the Darren and the Eden Valley. Uh, in fact, the Eden Valley walk ended at this point. So this is where the Medway starts. Uh, we've got a wicked view of the river behind the camera there and Tunbridge Castle here behind us. Um, Tunbridge Castle was built by a family and owned for over 300 years when they came to England with William the Conqueror. There we go, that's my little bit of knowledge about it. And this whole area here would have been where all the, the sort of uh, the shops or the market stalls and things were. There would have been a big um, uh, wall around, around this area that we are. Um, so back to the walk. It's about 30 miles, um, so it goes from here in Tunbridge over to Rochester, going through Maidstone. So we pretty much just follow the river the whole way, so it should be a good one. Um, I'm in the Fox 1 tonight, as is Tom. Oh, this is Tom, by the way. Hey! <laughs> All right. Um, and we've both got little bits of new kit. We've just accidentally fallen in to go outdoors and bought some bits. Um, I've got some new walking trousers, so it feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to head off that direction and uh, we'll see you along the route. <laughs> So about half an hour in and along the river and we found a pillbox. One of my favourite things to find on our walks. Oh. It looks like it's in good nick on the outside, not crumbled or anything. <laughs> <laughs> looks like the door's been bricked up. Yeah, yeah there's the old door. Top 22. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Most of them are Type 22s. It's standard hexagon shape, concrete walls. So I've been walking for a little way now and we've come across the second lock along this section of the Medway. This is the Eld Ridge Lock, which actually doesn't look very old. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Ooh, 
I haven't seen any boats today though, which is weird. But there is the weir on this side, or the fish pass. It allows fishes to go up and down the uh, river without getting caught in the lock. Hey, buddy! I'll tell you what you need! A rhino's tusk! And um, we've come across pillbox number two. Uh, it would have been quite a lot of World War II defence along this river. It's obviously quite a big river. Uh, would have been expected that the Germans would have used it to get into further into England. So obviously these were all set up at strategic points along the along the uh, rivers so that they could fire at the Germans if they ever got that far. Um, and then obviously protect our English soldiers. There's the river. So, just after this bridge, uh, we have found a World War II spigot mortar, uh, which is this concrete structure here with steel uh, reinforcements inside. Um, and originally this would have been like a dugout trench around it with concrete lined uh, walls. And it, at this point would have been about chest height. And the idea was that this little um, sort of piece of metal on top would have housed a 29 millimeter spigot mortar, also known as a blacker bombard. Uh, so it would have housed probably three to five troops and the idea being that they have a good vantage point over the river, over the sides of the river to fire at um, tanks and probably any boats that are coming up the river. Uh, again, it's just another sort of protection against the German invasion or potential German invasion over here in the UK. It's uh, pretty amazing what you find along these trails and routes. Uh, it's obviously why me and Tom do it. We love finding history along the way, learning how people used to live, maybe even not in the distant uh, past. You know, World War II was was only 70, 80 years ago, so it's it's not even been a hundred years since since that war. And there's uh, little pockets of history all along the way. Uh, but we can continue walking now. And we what's the bridge we're coming up to? Heart Lake Bridge and I think there's another story there so stay tuned and I'll tell you about that in a minute. So this is Heart Lake Bridge, uh, obviously not the original bridge, this is a bit more modern infrastructure here with a big iron um, pieces going across to hold the bridge up. But the story goes that in October 1853, uh, there was a wagon going over the original bridge with 30 hot pickers. And what they were doing was returning back to their camp. Unfortunately, the wagon lost control and broke through the wooden fence on top of the bridge and fell into the river. The river at that point had swollen, uh, obviously a lot of rainfall, at that time and unfortunately killed all 30 people. The coroner said that the reason for the disaster was poor maintenance by the Medway Navigation Company. They rejected those claims and did not pay towards the burial of the 30 hot pickers. They are actually buried uh, locally in a local church and there is a memorial to them in the church grounds. Right, we're just coming up to the fourth lock uh, along the River Medway, along 
the stretch we're doing and we've come across another pillbox and then by that big tree over there is another pillbox so pillboxes three and four uh, out of how many I don't know I'm sure we'll count them as we go and just around this corner should be the next lock I didn't film the last lock actually it was just there's not really anything there here we go There's the spruce and the weir and the lock over there. So I'm just going to see if we can get inside this one because it's the fourth pillbox and I haven't been inside one yet, which is not like me. Aha, there is a door. Yes, looks like you can get in this one. Oh, small door in this one full of rubbish. I'm not even going to go in fully, but yeah, it's just loads of rubbish down here on the floor. I'm not even going to go in fully, I don't think. Can't really see either. Good condition nevertheless, or good enough condition. It's not crumbled or anything. And those troops would have had this amazing view when they're not looking out for German fighters. Time for a little pit stop. I have one of these chai charge flapjacks. Chai means strength in the Aztec language, considered running food in the ancient civilization because messengers could run all day with just a small handful of chai seed. Endurance is at the heart of the history of chai. There you are, that's the history of chai. Right, we are leaving behind that tranquil little spot by the uh, by the lock there. Had a nice little snack, 20 minute, half an hour rest. Um, we've worked out, we've still got a long way to go. <laughs> it's about four o'clock now, so we've, uh, well, it's running quite late actually, our walk, but I reckon we've still got another four miles to do. Yeah. Uh, so another couple of hours with filming and all that, it, it takes a little bit longer. Um, and then, don't know, really know where we're gonna camp up. We've just gotta try and find a, a good little spot. There might be, I think Tom said there was private moorings and things along the river, so. Uh, and as we get towards Maystone, it gets a bit more dense with buildings and things, so we've gotta be more careful. But we need to keep going today, because otherwise tomorrow and Sunday there will be a massive walk uh, we're obviously trying to break this up a little bit so uh, gonna punch on and try and make way enough talking let's get walking <laughs> It's the happiest I've seen you all day, mate. Oh, 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 that was a testicle. Oh. <laughs> Just see the edge of another pillbox over there. And then across the other side of the water is another pillbox. And it is, uh, underneath it is sort of come away where the uh, river has gouged out the sides. So it's half sort of hanging over. No doubt another 
40, 50 years maybe, and that'll be in the drink. Okay, it's about six o'clock now, and we've got to uh, Stoneham Lock, which is this, which is an abandoned lock. So it's no longer in use. The doors on the lock were here, and they're also here, and they've been removed. But you can still walk across um, to the other side. There's a few more boats we've started seeing now, so we're obviously getting to an area that's used more on the river. But I'm not sure why it's abandoned. I mean, the water flows at the same level all the way through now, so it obviously was different at one point. But yeah, I think we're about a mile off till we get to Yalding, which is where there is a pub, and we're going to fill up with water, and then shortly after Yalding is where we will try and camp. So, yeah, let's keep going. Right, we are coming up to Yalding and an island called Teapot Island. It is called Teapot Island because there is a cafe restaurant on, uh, on the island and there is a massive collection. I think it's actually a world record the largest amount of teapots uh, where the lady sells sells teapots and then displays them for you to look at but this is a a cool little area another pillbox over here on the other side there uh, and there's a pub up here on the left called the boathouse so we're gonna go fill up with some water Well, it's about seven o'clock and we've just had a little pit stop in the boathouse. Um, <laughs> wet the whistle a little bit, you know. <laughs> and I had a pint of Coke each and a packet of crisp. We've got about an hour left of light and we are very close to where we think we're gonna camp. We've had a look on Google Maps at the aerial view and it looks, it looks like we could get away with it there. So there's not really much after that. So fingers crossed. Uh, it'll be a good enough camp spot so we're gonna we're gonna make like eggs and scramble and uh, get there as quick as we can welcome back we found our spot for the night in this little bit of woodland here there's a pillbox right there, so that should make an interesting little explore shortly. And um, well, it's, it is what it is. The ground looks like it used to be maybe a soak away or something like that from the river. Uh, but we are sort of distant from the river, so unless it really flooded tonight, really pissed it down, I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, but we're kind of just trying to clear away what we can, see what we're working with here. I feel like it's going to be quite a bumpy night. I should have bought a rake. <laughs> Did they do camping rakes? One show outdoors should invent one. Yeah. <laughs> the, the folding camping rake. <laughs> um, I might might go there or I might go here. I don't know yet. Uh, but yeah, we're going to lose light soon. So I'll set up and then we'll show you around the campsite. <sighs> so close to the train is. Oh, really? <laughs> That's annoying. Hopefully, after an hour or two, they've stopped beeping. Or might even might might even stop. I, I'm going to call up the train company. I'm just gonna be like, sort it out now. Do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm Tom, motherfucking outdoors. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know. Sponsored by OEX. Motherfucker. Sorry, that's <laughs> meant to hit the camera. Should we do that again? No. Right. What, what was it again? Tom motherfucking outdoors. 
yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to throw it. Fuck it. I've ruined it now. Okay, the time is 20 past eight. And as you can see, we have lost quite a lot of light. Um, but we have set up our Fox ones. There's mine. There's Tom's. Um, it's still still light outside of the woods, but yeah, another half an hour or so, and it should be uh, sort of pitch black. We haven't heard any more trains since that last one, <laughs> um, but that's not to say, and there's not going to be another one coming soon. Um, hopefully, they will die off. So we're both really knackered, uh, so we're going to get a good night's sleep tonight. I think we're both just going to eat and then just pass out. And then that should give us a good head start for the morning and tomorrow we've got quite a bit of walking to do tomorrow. Um, so it's going to chill out for a bit and then get some dinner on go. I'll bring you back when we do some dinner. Right, we've got our water on the boil. Um, tonight I'm having a four class pasta bolognese, decathlon special. Uh, so yeah, just boiling some water to tuck into that should be enough for tonight um, and Tom's got his <laughs> really tasty fish and <laughs> where's it fish and potato with parsley sauce <laughs> I tried pack. a bit of this last time well nice <laughs> but yeah he's got a big pack so as we all know I have been told that before Tom loves eating big dinners so yeah and then I've also got and he's got a hot apple and custard dessert <laughs> Whoa, how thin is that? I know. It's solid as well. I know. You could knock someone out with that, look. <laughs> nice. <laughs> a dessert I've got, just like a penguin, I think, and a Twix. <laughs> so, that'll sort me out. I might I might share it with you, you never know. Yeah, well, I might try it. Um, I also have lost my titanium spork, so I'm using a Chur Outdoors Cocoa <laughs> Spoon. Get a load of them. $2.99 delivered uh, off my website chairoutdoors.co.uk um, really good bit of kit that so yeah um, gonna wait for the water to boil and then have some grub right the bolognese is done oh, it is looking good what one is it? Uh, the that one yeah, the decathlon one. Yeah, it's good, that. How's that? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, just like Mummy used to make. <laughs> <laughs> Better than them fire pot meals I keep eating. <laughs> oh, horrific. Oh, this is good. Good tucker. Next on the menu tonight <coughs> is Whisper, Cadbury's Whisper. Hot chocolate. <laughs> there goes my filming light. It's just run out. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so water's boiling. Very nearly. And then we're gonna enjoy that. Oh, oh there's a train. train. <laughs> Is that going all night? <laughs> <laughs> Who's quiet down, please? <laughs> Joking, it's gonna go again. It, it was, oh, their light's just come back on. Do you wanna rig up a battery pack to it? Is it gonna go beep? Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> right, it is, I think it's about half ten. Um, eaten, drunk me drink chilled out and knackered now so ready for bed we've got into my sleeping bag into my thermal inner sleeping bag actually feels quite comfy now i'm in here <laughs> <laughs> which is good so apart from the noise of the train hopefully should have a good night's sleep both of us and then uh We'll probably get woken up early by the train again, but <laughs> I think the plan is to sort of have a half early morning-ish. I mean, the good thing is, being where we are, we don't need to pack down straight away. We can sort of mill out and cook breakfast and whatnot. Um, but we'll definitely have an earlier start than we did today. Uh, 
we started walking about half past one today. So yeah, even if we start walking at like nine, ten o'clock tomorrow, then then we've already got we'll have a load of distance underway bef before sort of lunchtime. So that's good. But anyway, I'll uh, see you in the morning. Night. Night. <laughs>